Hello everyone and welcome on back to another video. Today we are going to look at a beginner build for the Mesmer. I had some fun messing around with the Mesmer. I usually play the elite specs so it was a little bit of a challenge going back to the core of the profession and trying to flesh out a spec that has some survivability and also carries in that damage department. So as usual, let's get into the gear. I am running with soldiers, I believe it is. I always get mixed up with soldiers, yes. Soldiers, and I'm also running with Superior Rune of the Worm, fairly accessible on the trading post, increasing my vitality further, giving myself increased ferocity as well, making sure that I can do some nice crits. I'm running with the Great Sword. Now for the Great Sword, you can use Berserker. This stat type, I just found an, ex an ascended Great Sword on, in my bank, so I just kind of popped it on, but I'm also running with the sword in the focus. If you want to do berserkers or assassins, uh, something with power and precision, that's always a good choice to do as well. And then for my accessories and back items, this is where I'm putting extra damage and just going full berserkers. Want to hitting, want to be hitting that that nice damage moment. Uh, so really flesh that out, and you'll be able to do some some heavy hits. Now let's get into the actual specs that we're running with. I'm running Inspiration, Domination, and Illusions. Inspiration is the one trait line that will increase your survivability and also has some group application. So I'm taking Sympathetic Visage, Phantasms take your conditions when they are first summoned, Restorative Illusions, Healing, and Extra Condi Cleanse when I shatter, and then Illusionary Inspiration. Summoning an illusion heals not only myself, but allies around me. Some very subtle group application, very subtle group healing, but it is something very useful. To jump ahead just a bit, if you want to, you can run Blurred Inscriptions. I was playing around with this because I am running with a few Signets, but for the sake of this, I've, I kind of think that this is maybe a better option. Next, Domination. I'm running with Bountiful Blades, improves your greatsword skills and enhances them. Egotism, deal increased strike damage to foes with a lower health percentage than you. And Mental Anguish, shatter skills deal more damage. This bonus damage is doubled against foes that are not activating skills. So proper timing, increased damage, all the good stuff. This is where most of your damage application comes from and your vulnerability application. Next and finally, Illusions. Shatterstorm, shatter skill one becomes an ammo skill with an additional charge. Phantasmal Haste, Phantasms spawn with quickness, and then I also gain quickness when I create a Phantasm, one and three fourths of a second. Finally, Master of Fragmentation, 25% increased critical hit chance to my F1, Cripple on my F2, five targets being struck on my F3, and my Distortion now reflects projectiles. And then as for my utility skills, I'm running with Signet of the Ether, healing myself whenever I activate an illusion, but also healing myself if I activate this skill and also recharges all of my phantasm skills. Signet of Midnight to improve my expertise. This does impact non-damaging conditions, so to a degree that is, is pretty useful, but also the active ability is something I want to bring some attention to. This is a nice area of effect blind. It also stealths you and breaks stuns. So this is a good defensive ability to use if you happen to be in a bit of a pickle and you want to get out of it. So Signet of Midnight is good. If you don't want to take Signet of Midnight, you could of course take Signet of Inspiration just for more uh, swiftness, uptime, and additional boons. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a couple of Signets that you can play around with, but for this build and that survivability aspect, I'm running with this. Mirror Images, great clone generation, also a stun break. Signet of Illusions, creating clones every 10 seconds and then also activating this signet will recharge my shatter skills if you want to. So a lot of clone generation, always utilizing those shatters and having that, that clone element to this build, gaining healing and condition removal, summoning clones heals myself and allies around me. Summoning phantasms allows me to generate quickness and then shattering them multiple times with Shatterstorm, getting in a, uh, improvements to the shatters themselves. This is a very shatter heavy build. And then finally for the elite, Time Warp. Just gotta go with kind of the classics of Time Warp. If you really don't want to have another active ability, you could just take Signet of Humility and just roll with that. But I wanted to have a little bit of an element to the quickness uptime and, you know, just extra quickness for everyone around and also some slow application. Oh, not already in a mob. Okay, so we're gonna um, remove the, the condition of, I don't think the, did that remove the immobilize? It was so close to already um, 
dropping off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's get into some combat and let's just focus on summoning these illusions. With the weapon set of Greatsword, it really allows you to play at ranged. Risen Giant up, and there is one, perfect. It is being attacked by someone else, but we can at least, you know, send in some group support and just send in those illusions. They're gonna summon those, we're gonna shatter, we're gonna use that one, shatter it again. Big power strikes, your F1 is really where you're gonna get a lot of those, those hits out of it. We can also use our time warp if we would like to, just to get extra slow and quickness uptime for all our allies and location, and also ourselves. If we want to utilize time warp at our location, perhaps if we're in sword focus, and that's the other weapon set that I'm running with, sword focus is pretty nice to uh, wrangle up any enemies, interrupt them as well. And also your fifth one, it's nice vulnerability application. It's a defensive bubble. I mean, this doesn't reflect them, it just, I think it just destroys them, which is pretty useful still. Reflecting and destroying them. Uh, certain situations, reflects are better. Sometimes destruction is better, but anything that will destroy projectiles and mitigate that attack in the open world is more often than not useful to have. But this pull is also really great with the great so we can use our fifth skill to push them back if we need to. Also, this is a cripple, but that's a teleport, so it doesn't really matter. Get a nice interrupt out of that as well. Easy access to damage easy access to sustain from healing and also clone generation to uh, trick the AI. And even if you bring this into PvP, you can trick enemies as well if you're really skilled. So there are a couple elements to this build that you're not necessarily going to get like the most bursty build ever with Mesmer. It's definitely not at the moment, uh, not at the level of engineer where you just auto attack and you, you, you you're good with that and you do perfect with that. So you do have to weave in a couple of your shatters here and there, but I kind of think that this build is a slightly more, slightly more engaging than the other auto attack heavy builds for beginners, but it's still pretty light on the utility skills. So you don't have to kind of weave those in and you know bloat your rotation even more. This build is very much focused on your weapon skills and also your shatters. So as long as you're prioritizing those, you should be set. And even you still, you're getting, you're getting some good damage out of this. No, not too, not too bad. We're gonna use our time warp. We're gonna shatter again and go into our sword sword. The cool thing with the sword sword is with the time warp being an ethereal field, your illusionary leap using the second ability counts as a leap. So if you combo in it, you gain access to chaos aura, which is pretty nice for a defensive aura. You get um, some random boons when you're struck while applying random conditions to enemies that strike you. So sometimes those those little moments can also be uh, pretty nice. Uh, it's not the most consistent application of chaos aura, but it's still something to play around with uh, and nice to have from time to time. Yeah, these Orion spectral enemies, they're getting rolled. They're getting rolled. I'm gonna interrupt that. Get some good applications of interrupts and even moving in closer. But the more uh, the more you are arranged with this weapon kit uh, for the great sword, the more damage you will be doing. Uh, so we are getting struck. Okay, perfect. The aggro has been shifted over to the clones. We appreciate you. We respect you. Let's summon some more illusions. Also, our uh, signet will be summoning random illusions every 10 seconds. It seems that that illusion started to attack another Risen, but that's okay. We're gonna um, focus a little bit more on the Risen themselves. Uh, we're gonna go into Sword and Focus, get some extra burst damage up. We can probably also pull some of these together. Here we go. And that we're gonna dodge that as well. Very good. I'm gonna go back into Great Sword. We're gonna dodge that, kind of get, get it ranged a little bit. Um, and yeah, you can get a lot of the aggro off of you with your illusions. And that's another element of survivability for the Mesmer. And it's pretty important to, to realize and to take advantage of that. We're even going to stealth a little bit just to kind of give ourselves a little bit of a breather. Also applying that blind, pretty useful. We're going to use our eight skill to generate some more clones while our uh, phantasms are uh, using their attacks. And that's something to get into the habit of. We can kind of show this off here. Uh, if you want to, if you can properly time it once you get more used to Mesmer, you can summon your illusions while summoning clones and then shattering here. Uh, but you can get into this rhythm of summoning your phantasms first, 
using your illusionary shatters to shatter your clones. And then once they're back up, so we'll, we'll showcase this, summoning the illusions, shattering them, and then the phantasms end summoning extra clones, which we can then shatter again. So you can you can kind of chain your shatters together. And it's uh, sometimes a smart thing to use depending on your build and depending on the weapons that you are using. Uh, and with this build in particular, having two summons of your phantasmal berserker is, is quite handy. We'll summon some illusions. We get some cripple on that. Uh, we're gonna uh, lunge in here, shatter then. Two more are up. We're gonna shatter again and they're done. They're finished. They're gone. Thank you all so very much for coming on by. Like the video if you liked it. If you'd like to get early access to these videos and support the channel, head on over to the Patreon. And I stream on Twitch every day of the week playing Guild Wars 2 and other MMOs. If you'd like to try Guild Wars 2 for free or purchase the expansions, I have links down below, but it's also available on Steam. And thank you all for coming on by. Leave any comments that you would like, some tips about Mesmer, chit chat about this build. Thank you all so much for watching. It has been a pleasure making, uh, these videos and the final one is coming up with Elementalist. Thank you all and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.